Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan with the 3,925 pound, that sounds right, <laughs> sorry, I see a lot of numbers every day, Catalina Expedition 192 FQS. This is a uh, sofa slide front bed rear bath model. It is basically, you could describe it either as a Summit 7 on steroids, or you could kind of describe this as a stick and tin Geo Pro because it actually follows a lot of the same really big bullet hit points like uh, a factory solar package, factory inverter. It is a very good camper for off-grid camping. Um, it is a camper that is really good for uh, pulling through small sites, tight spaces. It is fully travel accessible. I wouldn't, th this is certainly not minivan towable. A lot of times when you see single axle people ask that. I think it's a very good tow package SUV tour. If you've got about a 5,500 pound tow rating or better, you're probably gonna be okay here. If you're planning on doing some real serious towing, you might wanna get something with maybe say a 6,000 pound tow package or better, but this can work for a lot of smaller vehicles or just a lot of people looking for something a little more simplistic, rustic. You need good storage, you need good space, you need good function. This is all of those things all in one. Now, normally I would wait until uh, just before we go outside to close the slide out, but I'm actually starting with the slide closed on this one because it's travel functionality. It is what I call totally turtle friendly, which sounds like something from a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Saturday morning cartoon. It's like totally turtle friendly, dude. Um, anyway, you know, with the slide closed, you can still maintain the access and use of every single thing in this camper. 100% of everything in this RV remains functional. You frankly don't even need to open up the slide to use it. It's just going to give you some extra room that I think you will really, really appreciate. So if you are looking for travel stops, or if maybe you're just really wedged into some place where overnight you can't get the slide open, no big deal. This is totally travel stop friendly. And by the way, if you're kind of wondering why the mattress looked funny, it's because the Dynofa table was shoved under it. It's a really good way to be able to travel with that going down the road without it slip sliding and bish bashing all over the place in the camper, which are technical terms, by the way. And this is what I'm talking about right here. When you open up the slide out, between the slide, the generally lighter color palette, the six and a half foot interior height, because this is not a reduced height camper, and the fact that uh, we are slightly bigger body, this is seven and a half foot wide versus a lot of seven foot wide campers. It gives it just a little bit more look, feel and space all the way around. Not to mention, see the big window there in the slide. All of the sidewall windows open for airflow, by the way. The front window is there just for viewing, but it does make the whole camper look and feel bigger. Plus there's a kitchen breeze window we haven't quite seen yet. This thing looks and feels anything but compacted. There's also a skylight and power vent fan combo above the bed that we'll zero in on in just a second. But first of all, I want to point out the entertainment center. So when you're sitting over here in the sofa slide, the TV pivots around. It can pivot around toward the bed. It can pivot both directions. So it's always good, easy viewing. That is a 12 volt TV, by the way, because remember, this is a camper that is designed with off grid use and function in mind. That's one of the cool things about this. And you might look at it and say, I don't like how the TV is sharing countertop space. When you really look at this floor plan, a lot of manufacturers stop the kitchen counter space where the uh, oven is. Catalina did not. They extended it and they gave us all that extra storage that we'll see open in just a minute. So what they did is they gave this thing a much larger kitchen counter than you traditionally find in a camper this size in this class. And yeah, that means that maybe the TV overhangs with the countertop a little bit. But that doesn't mean that you have to be, you know, cooking bacon grease on an electric grill next to it, especially with that flush mount, uh, you know, uh, sealed edge matching sink cover over there that you could use for prep space. There's a lot of different things you could do with this. Not to mention the fact that sitting here on the sofa, it's not just a neat sofa, it's kind of a simulated cinema seat. Because when you're sitting here and you got a drink in hand, you don't really have any place to put it. Well, thankfully, Catalina has a solution for that. You just drop this little armrest right there, and there you go. Or... If you're a bit thicker in the hips or you want to kind of put that away and twist a little bit and kick your feet up and lounge a little bit you can you can couch the crap out of this couch right here it, it is it is good for a lot of couching it's coucherific and just like this right here when you're not using the tv it can really kind of get right out of the way and it magnet locks in place it magnet locks it has it the magnets bite the magnets have a strong form of attraction what is the uh the proper phrase there i i, I don't know i just kind of it didn't seem right to me. In case you're wondering too, the red black wire down here, because this is a 12 volt TV, it actually has an inline fuse. So if you do suffer a power surge, 
It's not gonna, you know, fry your nice television. Now the headboard up here, <clears throat> it's easily missed, but you can see how there actually is storage under that. And I want to point this headboard area out because Catalina exclusively uses 60 by 74 Camp Queens. Now it is nice that it's a full 60 inches wide, but that is a short queen. However, because this is a seven and a half foot wide camper, you could, frankly, very easily remove that headboard and put in place a true queen mattress if you're willing to sacrifice the headboard. So that's just something that you're going to have to kind of keep in mind which one's more important to you. But it would be very easy to do that. A small modification like that is not going to screw up your warranty or anything. So it's not a true queen. And it's not overtly true queen capable. But it's it's close. And it would, even a person like me who's an idiot with tools, if I had a manual screwdriver, not even a screw gun, I could make all this work. This is pocket screwed cabinetry, by the way. So it's uh, screws into wood, not staples into uh, uh, MDF particle board, by the way. That's only about 50-50 feature in this class. Actually, here at Halet RV, J Flights and Catalinas do that. Wildwoods Cherokees do not. They use uh, stapled fasteners. So just so that you know we're being fair, I'm even willing to compare against the things that we carry here at Halet RV. Now, this up top here, it is more of the simple four-inch blade fan kind of thing. Of course, uh, you know, you've got plenty of good window ventilation, but because the fan is already there, because the wiring is already run, if you wanted to upgrade to a bigger vent fan, that is easy stuff for uh, us to do for you here at Halet RV. You want to upgrade to a fan? I tell you what, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, the best variety is called Hangs, the Hangs Vortex series. Those are pound for pound, like that's the fan that I would put in my own personal camper. Now, I know we're going to get a lot of questions about this, so I want to go ahead and proactively get this out of the way. And if you appreciate the transparency and the candor, please hit that like button, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know, say hey, thanks, whatever the case may be. We've got ourselves a microwave over a gas electric absorption fridge. There is currently no option to call the factory and say, can you get rid of the microwave? Can you give me just a bigger fridge? At the time of this filming, this is the only way this Catalina uh, Expedition 192 floor plan is offered. So just a, a quick little as info for you there, because I know a lot of folks are going to ask. I, I don't blame you. I think I would ask too. Again, I love how they extend the cabinetry all the way up. And I realized as I accidentally bumped that door down there with my boot, even below the bed, they've got a nice little storage pocket right there. They utilize every little space they can very nicely. This is all sealed edge pressed membrane countertops. You can see there's no seams in here or anything like that. The countertop covers all match. I love how everything's wide open. Like it's just begging for you to throw a spice rack or something up there. And since this is what people call a stick and tin trailer, not laminated, it's very easy for them to put outlets in the actual sidewall down low where you can actually get to it. It makes a lot more sense. Plus, of course, there are some outlets hidden over here behind the TV if you need to repurpose this space a little bit. Some people are going to say, I don't, I don't care about the TV. It is standard, by the way. It's not an option that we added money to this thing. It's just, this is how they come right here. I also like the fact that it actually comes with an oven. Normally, in a little camper, I'm not all about the ovens here in the Midwest. I know in the southern states, you got to have your cookies and biscuits. And I don't, I don't blame you. I like cookies. I like biscuits. Look at my dad bod. That, there, that, you know, there ain't no lying. But uh, in the Midwest, we do a lot of park camping. And I prefer normally more storage. But I think there's already enough storage in here that I think the oven is actually a nice pickup in this model. Not to mention, just the nicer materials. Like we talked about the pocket screwed uh, cabinetry. You see all plywood drawer construction. They just, they put it together well. They put it together very nicely in here. And if you were just laying in bed, this is kind of what you'd see here. You can kind of, you kind of get a little bit of a reflection of me laying like Jeff Goldblum as Dr. Ian Malcolm in uh, Jurassic Park over there. You see me just kind of stretching out in the back of the Jeep after being injured by a dinosaur, except I'm in a Catalina. with. It's not even close to the same thing now that I say it, is it? What I was getting at is easy views of the television before I segued into Never Never Land like Peter Pan. And you can see with that front windshield, it never feels tight in here. It never feels enclosed. Now, if I sit up a little bit, take a look at this. There is plenty of headroom above my head. I am a big guy. I can sit in here. Now, obviously, yes, my head is very close to this, but it's not a head knocker. Like, if you sit up real quick because you hear a... Uh, rabbit getting slaughtered outside your window i don't know things happen when you're camping weird stuff happens you know a ghost knocks on the camper bigfoot rocks the thing which happens by the way um uh you get the idea you're not going to knock yourself out here and you can uh just go back to laying down and having a good time 
Now, moving on from there, remember, a full six and a half foot interior height means this whole thing, it, again, it has like a nice, big, large look and feel. You can see how uh, we are carpetless over here. We are easy cleaning. You see that uh, black circle is one of the uh, furnace vents right there, by the way. Now, something else I wanted to show you, if I flip the camera back around, is you see that I can walk right under this air conditioner with the knobs and not crack my head. I'm about 6'3"-ish again with this 6.5 half interior height. It gives you just enough room to do little stuff like that, which is kind of nice. Flip the camera back around one more time. Extra little pockets of storage above the uh, sofa right there are kind of nice. And if you, you uh, take a look down here, you see that we've, again, got that nice sofa slide, but we've got these huge pillows. Well, my wife has a very interesting use for those things. You see, she calls them snoreways because if I'm just laying here and I'm like... <clears throat> it's amazing. You just kind of go... <clears throat> and then it's like as if by magic, the snoring magically stops. And I obviously must not have too much like life insurance money because she hasn't finished the job yet. But I've been told uh, there's potential if I keep it up. I, I don't know. Get, I'll get back to you on that one. Obviously, you see over here, you've got that free-floating table. Uh, that is the same sealed edge counter type stuff that we saw over here in the kitchen space. But what's kind of nice about this, because that's free-floating, you can hide it away. We saw it stored under the bed earlier in travel mode, so that's a good place to keep it out of the way. I think during the day, I would just leave it face down on top of the bed when I wasn't using it. You could also take it outside for picnic time, which is no big deal. You can use it with or without that kind of cinema seat armrest down below. And in case you need it, this can fold down into an extra sleeper over here, which is handy. Now, that's not an adult-sized bed by any means. It does fold pretty much flat. A little foam topper might be a nice thing to help smooth out the ridges a little bit. But a little kid, a big dog, they're going to get along just fine there. I like the location of the uh, all the, the switches. What few switches this has. You know, it doesn't need a lot of different switches. But they are right next to the entry door. And how nice is it? Let's give Catalina a quick hand. Give them some feedback in the comments. Tell them, good job actually including at least a frosty glass pass-through light window in here. And in a way, the frosty glass is kind of nice because you don't lose any privacy. I like a full viewing window, but, you know, it, it, people kind of see inside the thing sometimes. The bathroom here is simple but effective. Got some good leg room in this thing. That's one of the things about this being seven and a half foot wide versus a lot of the seven foot wide campers with maybe a similar floor plan. It gives it just a little bit more space in the bathroom. I like the separate power vent fan in the bathroom up here. Again, that's a simple four inch blade fan that could be upgraded. Some decent headroom here in the shower. I do need to put my head in the bubble to stand in there, but it's no big deal. It's comfortable. The skylight is positioned appropriately where I feel like I can get in there and get my job done. And that is a full medicine cabinet, not just a mirror glued against the wall, by the way. And let me just kind of crack a couple things open here so you can see what space is in the bathroom. Now, I get that there's hoses in the way. We should probably tuck those out of the way a little bit. But there'd be some room in there for, like, you know, some, some body washes and things. And up here, you got yourself a whole bunch of Lipitor storage. Yes, sir, Bob. You know what else I'm noticing? Is it back up here just a little bit? Look at the thickness of these interior walls. Catalina doesn't build it thinner, lighter, cheaper, just because it's a smaller camper. They just build the body shorter. And I think that's a pretty key distinction here. And I just about forgot to mention the fact, this does have the Aquaview shower miser system like a Rockwood Geo Pro. So if you're off grid and you're using the water from your freshwater holding tank with your pump to take a shower, uh, when you're waiting for the water to warm up or get the right temp, you're not wasting it into the gray tank. It will recycle into the fresh tank. Don't use this a lot in the parks, though, because if you're not thinking about it, if you flip that lever and you're hooked up to um, park water, you will actually be pushing water into your fresh tank that you weren't exactly expecting to be there. If you're not careful, you could flood that fresh tank. Now, the overflow should just kind of spit and sputter and get some of the water out of the tank so you're not hurting anything, but it's just a, best, a better idea to avoid it completely if you are at a park. These come in not only with just a, you know, a good size, easy towing size, short length, you know, it's something that's very comfortable to manage, especially if you're not looking for anything big. If you're intimidated by a big trailer, this is a good fit. And just, it's subjective. I think dynamite curb appeal. Look at that thing. That, to me, that is good looking. A lot of times when you're in more of a conventional stick and tin class, you don't get good looks like this. Now, last year it actually had this extra thick, nearly smooth skin they did go back to the conventional corrugated skin because that uh smoother skin had to be super super thick it weighed a ton it cost a ton 
So basically they went to back to that conventional skin package. I think everybody agreed that it looked really cool, but it just didn't, the, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. You know what it is? A full on true pass through storage. That is something a lot of little campers don't have. And over here, this is one of the main things that's going to separate a Summit 7 from an Expedition. The factory 1000 watt inverter to run uh, multiple outlets in the camper, even off battery power. Understand that you're sucking more juice out of your battery when you're doing that. And the factory uh, solar package with 40 watt uh, converter over here. Uh, or charge controller, I'm sorry, not, not converter. That's a different thing, apologies, I, I misspoke there. Um, you notice how there's also a full-on side mount solar plug here? We will talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but that is a very unconventional quality. I think a very special thing that they put on these. Note too, the second propane tank and the hard shell cover on the front. A lot of single axle campers by default, and like the Summit 7, the simpler series, it's a single propane tank. That's one of the more off-grid focused differences on something like this. If you're going to spend some time off-grid, especially if you're gonna run the furnace. The furnace is really the one major consumer of propane in most RVs. Even that refrigerator, it sips, it doesn't gulp off the propane, basically. Uh, I know a lot of people that boondock, they're like, I use like maybe one 30 pound tank a year. These are dual 20s, but there's two of them with an auto changeover regulator. Uh, that uh, just smexy frameless front window on the front there just really kind of sets the tone on this one, doesn't it? Now the Expedition series uh, also includes that standard front uh, bike rack here. There is an optional roof kayak rack if you are so inclined on those as well. You might have noticed the magnet holdbacks on the baggage doors and kind of like the cabinetry, Catalina and j both are very good about giving us tinted windows, even in a single axle class, which is something that, again, only about 50% of brands tend to offer. You see the larger Westlake radial uh, off-road tires right there, helping raise the whole thing up off the ground so you're not, you know, bottoming out and scraping out on this thing. Like a friend of mine, she's got a, a Mini Cooper that she just wrecked because she hit a raccoon. She couldn't clear a raccoon, and the raccoon was stronger than, you know, the radiator, basically. <laughs> she pulled up into our driveway leaking fluid, and I'm like, oh, we're going on a road trip that day. I'm like, so we're driving. She's like, yep. <laughs> Wife's like, all right, let's get in. <laughs> this is another little kind of special Catalina thing they do here. Um, the uh, single axle stuff typically doesn't have this, so that's why I wanted to point this out. It is a real outside shower. A lot of times when you see one of these on a camper, you're like, yep, there's the camp shower, there's the black tank flush, and this has those, but this one actually mounts that cleat up high where you can actually use it, you know? And again, I think they've done a really good job color contrasting the exterior here. The front and rear, uh, rear walls being a little bit darker, it gives the camper, I don't know, like a sense of movement, even when it's sitting still, I think. We are rear view camera ready. On the back here, you see a matching spare tire and full aluminum wheel. They didn't like drop down to steel or anything. And you've got that 200 pound cargo rack on the back, which I think on these little expeditions is actually more important than even on their big legacy models. Because this little guy, if you are planning to get off grid, you might want something like a cooler, uh, a portable generator. I would say bikes, but you got bikes on the front, you know? But uh, man, what would you put on there? Like, how would you go camping with this thing? Plus you see a full roof ladder. That's something Catalina does not do a lot of. The expeditions are maybe, I think actually the only campers that Catalina even offers a, uh, a rear ladder. Um, now a couple more little details here. On the back side, you wanna do some grilling, we got ourselves a propane cooker hooker right above drunken uncle leash latch right there for the four-legged furry friends. You, now, in case you're curious, I don't talk about these very often, but you see these little inverted triangles sitting right down? What that's going to do right there is um, if you go, like if there's a speed bump or a really steep incline, that is there to protect the stabilizer jack so that you don't accidentally scrub it. Um, and actually, if you draw an imaginary line from the uh, bottom of that tire to the uh, bottom of that triangular object, that's called, appropriately enough, the scrub line so that you know you don't rip stuff off. Now we've got ourselves a power awning here, but one of the cool things Catalina does is they also give us like one of those crazy 16 color strobe light multifunction uh, like party light jobs out here. Now you can just leave it on one color. It doesn't have to be green, red, blue, whatever, uh, cerulean. <laughs> you can just make it like white if you want. 
Or he can make it cerulean. <laughs> that reminds me of my cousin Jeffrey. He got kicked by a mule, went cross-eyed. He went back after he got kicked by a mule again, but then he got kicked the third time, went cross-eyed. But his favorite color was cerulean. Bless his heart. Now you might see a couple of Mr. Mike America quality control agents footprints up here right now, but you won't see those when you take it home. Because we do things like clean the camper, show you how it works, propane, battery, all that stuff at no additional charge. Uh, which some places do, some places do not. Some places are going to say, oh man, we have an unbeatable sale price. And by the way, here's your $1,995 prep package. Uh, never mind that though, not to mention you also have $800 for delivery fees. We just don't do that stuff at Halet RV. The price is the price. It's an all-inclusive figure. Just add taxes and tags. And I can't build those into the front side because I don't know what state you're coming from so it can change. Now, this little spaceship alien disc that we got right here. That little dinner plate looking thing right there is your TV antenna. It's omnidirectional. I will tell you, it doesn't get the most extreme of range like the old crank up antennas did. Well, you also don't have to crank it up and down, forget it's cranked up and accidentally take it off with a tree branch. And this right here, this is actually why I wanted to get up here, not to mention the fact that it is a fully walkable roof, but last year, the Catalina Expeditions, they had all sorts of solar capability, but they didn't actually have any solar. These have a 100 watt raised panel high efficiency solar package. Remember, these have that two way gas electric absorption fridge, which is very low power draw and propane mode. This is a very good off grid camper. This is a very good battery tending package right here. It is expandable. I don't know at the time of this filming how expandable it is. I apologize. I'm trying to get some details on that right now. I've actually already got a text into my rep. We just carry a lot of different brands at Halet RV, and sometimes little details and updates like that are hard for me to keep up on. So I'll do my best. I'll try to maybe leave a note in the description or edit onto this video if I've already got an answer, whatever the case may be. Now, don't forget, you have not just a full ruler, uh, ruler, roof, solar, ruler. That's how I got to that. It works. It fits and it works, by the way. You not only have, I should edit this out, but I never do, a roof solar prep plug. It's not just a side solar prep plug for like a portable panel. It's a full on plug. If you want to get some more big heavy duty panels that tie into the 40 amp charge controller that comes with this thing, it's here. That is not a normal feature in the towable RV industry. So let me know what you think of this little off-grid runner. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you like, maybe what you'd change given the opportunity, or any questions you have. I'll do my best to fill in the blanks because I try to cover a lot of information, but obviously I can't cover every single nut, bolt, and widget here. So uh, take a moment, leave us some comments. If you appreciate what we do here, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And remember, at Halet RV, again, we don't do those pesky hidden dealer fees. We are not fee-ridden, <laughs> as it were. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet Camp, everyone. Hope to hear from you soon. This help me with the real accuracy of the Hibas Ark, no matter if I get at the main William Mouth, if I get fake at me, we had a Sark, no William Mouth, if I get your face in the Zerk, I mean, Sammy Red.